following program is a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools, funded in part by the Virginia Satellite Educational Network. Welcome to Meet the Author. My name is Della Kidd, and I'm here at the MTA studio. Joining me today is educator and author Dennis Denenberg. He'll be sharing information from his book, 50 American Heroes Every Kid Should Meet. This book is full of inspiring facts that make learning come alive. So if you're not sure who is considered the first lady of the world, or who helped to make peanut butter a household staple, then you've come to the right place, because you'll learn those answers on today's show. Dennis, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, it's good to have you. We've got a great show planned for today. You'll notice that we have several heroes represented on the set with us. In just a few minutes, we're going to have you participate in our Hero Challenge to see how many of these heroes you can identify. Okay, Dennis, so before you tell us who was considered the First Lady of the World, would you give us your definition of what a hero is and why you believe every kid should have a hero? A hero, Della, is uh, an individual, male or female, who's made a positive contribution mm -hmm. to our world. In some way, <clears throat> excuse me, by a deed or an action, they've made uh, our lives better. It might be through an invention, might be through a cause they've promoted. They're good people who do good things. Heroes aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. Heroes are like you and me. They make mistakes. They're human. They're human. Mm -hmm. But they, they rise above and uh, they they enrich our lives. Why should kids have heroes? Because they can inspire us. They can make us understand that we can achieve as well, that we can uh, go to our full potential and even go beyond, uh, like so many of them did. Well, tell us, who is the First Lady of the World? Well, the First why Lady... Why considered that? The First Lady of the World is, and if I may put on one of her hats, Lovely. is <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of Franklin D. Roosevelt. And I always start my... Uh, uh, sessions with teachers or parents or students with Eleanor Roosevelt herself. And uh, she did indeed have a high-pitched voice. Yes, I tend did. to exaggerate yes. it. But uh, what I think she represents to so many people is uh, a woman of courage and breaking out of the mold. Uh, she did things that first ladies were not supposed to do. She became an, uh, a personality and uh, a popular figure in her own right because of the causes she promoted. Tolerance for everyone, for example. What, what other, because uh, she, she was married to Franklin Roosevelt, of course, and she was their first lady. And what were some of the issues that she had to demonstrate courage that set her apart from others? She was clearly uh, an early advocate for civil rights, mm -hmm. truly understood uh, that we in America are not treating African Americans the same way we're treating white mm -hmm. people. Uh, she was a champion of the downtrodden. And uh, being First Lady during the Great Depression, many people wrote very personal letters to Eleanor uh, and thought of Eleanor as a friend. And in where she could help, she really did try. She became, of course, uh, FDR's uh, legs, literally, and traveled extensively. Because he was paralyzed. Because right. of his paralysis. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, she put a real human face on caring during the Great Depression. Tell me, do any of the heroes in your book wear capes? No, uh, Della, they're all real people. They don't, they don't need a magic cape to be heroic. It's their personal qualities that make them heroic. Uh, so, no, they're not the fantasy figures, the mm -hmm. fantasy superheroes that kids have fun with, and mm -hmm. I understand that. These are real people, just like uh, you and me and... Uh, uh, the kids who are hopefully reading the book. And I know you've brought some wonderful items with you. Tell us more about this vest that you brought with you today. Well, this is something a kid yeah. could wear instead of a cape. Right. Uh, you could wear a vest about your hero, and I brought with me my Eleanor Roosevelt vest. Um, when I work with kids and with teachers, I like to emphasize that one way to bring heroes to life is to make content-rich projects that can teach you about the hero. So you can learn all about Eleanor Roosevelt's mm -hmm. life from this vest. And what I say to kids is uh, read a biography, 
Get an old t-shirt and with magic markers and paint and crayons, make a hero's t-shirt that you can wear to school and let everybody know about uh, this hero you've met through reading about him or her. And this vest is fascinating because it has a picture of Eleanor as an adult with the year of her birth and her death, a quote attributed to her, life has got to be lived, that's all there is to it. Absolutely. By looking at the different items on here, you can learn about the key events in Eleanor Roosevelt's life. Eleanor Roosevelt was the chief uh, author of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. So that's represented here even by the picture of her holding the wonderful document. Mm -hmm. The uh, story with the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution where uh, she championed an African-American opera singer who was not permitted in the late 1930s to sing at their building and uh, Eleanor helped arrange one of the most famous concerts in American history where Marian Anderson sang on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. With huge crowds With in attendance. With a huge yes. crowd. So, you know, the, I think yeah. the most fascinating thing when kids or teachers see the vest is they want to know what everything means. You know, we thirst for knowledge mm -hmm. about real people. Well, Dennis, I bet many of our viewers have a peanut butter sandwich in their lunchbox today. I know I do. Um, but what they probably don't know or maybe don't uh, have any idea about is who was responsible for making peanut butter such a, a household item, an everyday item. Tell us about him. And that would be George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver, an African-American, uh, was concerned about the plight of Southern farmers. And uh, he knew that if he could find a, a crop, other than because cotton had exhausted the land, if he could find a crop mm -hmm. uh, to help them be successful in farming and be productive uh, on the land, uh, that their financial plight would be solved. And he experimented. He actually experimented with two uh, crops, sweet potatoes and peanuts. He's more well known for his peanut success. And he came up with, oh, I, I forget the number, but it's literally hundreds, hundreds of, of ways, ways to use a peanut. Correct. Right? And of course, uh, he popularized <laughs> yeah. the peanut. I, I, some people think of him as literally Mr. Peanut. That's funny. Well, we're very grateful to him. We are. Dennis, students from all over the country have sent an email, so let's go ahead and get started on some of those. The first is from Katie. She's in Arlington, Virginia, and she writes, Dear Mr. Denenberg, how did you pick the 50 heroes that are in your book? Aren't there more than 50 American heroes? Katie, that is an excellent question mm -hmm. and one I am asked frequently. There are indeed more than 50. I had 175 on my list, but it made a terrible book title, Katie. 175 uh, American Heroes. Buddy. So we... My co-author, I work with a, a lady named Lorraine Roscoe. We n slowly but surely narrowed the process, uh, narrowed the list. Mm -hmm. uh, the toughest part, Katie, being when we got down to 55 and five more had to go. Uh, 50 is sort of a magic number. The selection process. How did you have when you had to narrow down those five? Did you had did you have to look at their their character traits? Uh, their accomplishments, what their what their uh, impact was on society. What did you have to decide to to make those choices? Well, we wanted to show students that uh, heroes are in every field of human endeavor. You can be a hero in medicine. You can be a hero in the field of science. You can be a hero in the arts. Mm -hmm. Too often, before we've taken a very limited definition of uh, heroism. You had to be in a political office or on the military on the battlefield. Uh, but heroes can contribute and make the world a better place in any field of human endeavor. We also want it to represent to kids that heroes are both men and women of any ethnic group, of any uh, race, any religion. Uh, we wanted to show kids that regardless of who they are, mm -hmm. they can aspire to be a hero. And I understand a student had some input as to who was going to be included in your selection. Absolutely. When I still taught at uh, Millersville University, one of my students who was going to be a future elementary mm -hmm. teacher was absolutely angry that her hero, Mary McLeod Bethune, mm -hmm. was not going to be in the book. And uh, her name was Angie Post Vitel, and Angie lobbied, I, in some ways stalked me <laughs> to uh, uh, persuade me to put Mary McLeod Bethune in the book. She would leave notes under my office door. She uh, carried a banner one time in her car and saw me in my automobile and raised her banner. And uh, when I spoke with her, literally shoved a bag of books about Mary McLeod Bethune to me. And Angie won. Mary McLeod Bethune, her. a tremendous 
uh, African American yeah. educators in the book. Well, and she was very persistent. She was. And it paid off. Good for her. Uh, this question, we have another email, so let's go to this. This is from Kyle in Port St. Lucie, Florida. And he says, Dear Mr. Denberg, what or who inspired you to write your book? And did you have a personal hero when you were a kid? Well, the inspiration for my work about heroes really came from uh, being in classrooms, Kyle. And, and I wouldn't see pictures of real heroes in a lot of classrooms. I'd see cartoon mm -hmm. figures. And uh, I thought, you know, we need to put pictures as a very start in our classrooms of real people who've made the world a better place and let kids ask questions about them. So I wrote a little article called de Alf the Classroom, getting the cartoon figure out, right. out of the classroom and heroes like Eleanor Roosevelt and Thomas Edison in the classroom. Uh, my personal inspiration really came from my eighth grade history teacher, a, a wonderful gentleman named Mr. Hildebrand. And I was fortunate later in life, a few years ago, to reconnect with Mr. Hildebrand, who I had not seen for 40 years. Mr. Hildebrand inspired me to love Thomas Jefferson. Of all the famous heroes in our book, of all the 50, mm -hmm. Mr. Jefferson, and if I may put Mr. Jefferson's hat on, Mr. Jefferson is my number one. Uh, in fact, my love of Mr. Jefferson, my crazy eighth grade brain, Kyle, said, you have to go to William and Mary because that's the college that Thomas Jefferson attended. So I set a goal and worked real hard to get the best grades I could and was able to go to the College of William and Mary. So I spent four wonderful years. I used to say I walked the same steps that Mr. Jefferson walked. Well, that's a fascinating story, and I think it, I know my my fourth grade teacher was my my inspiration, Miss James. I would love to reconnect with her. Oh, we were I think very you fortunate. Should. This next email question is from Carolyn in Potomac, Maryland, and she wants to know how long did it take you to write your book, at what and what kind of research did you have to do? Um, Carolyn, it took us about two years from when we developed the list through the actual completion mm -hmm. of the writing process. Uh, it involved tons of reading, Carolyn. Wherever uh, one of the heroes had written an autobiography, mm -hmm. we certainly wanted to read about his or her life in the person's own words. And then we read as many biographies as we could, particularly children's biographies, be because we wanted to see what other authors were suggesting were important events in mm -hmm. the lives of this hero that captivated children. And I know you used a lot of primary resources as well. Can That's you tell correct. Us about those? We went to, we wanted to read what the hero wrote in his or her own words. Mm -hmm. So a lot of letters, if there was a diary available. Um, to really uh, try and hear their voice. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And of course, for the more current heroes mm -hmm. in the book, uh, any kind of videotapes we could uh, watch about the hero. And that's a wonder, wonderful element of your book, too, because you give us ch choices of where we can go to either look more into to the person that, that you chose to be included in your list of heroes or about a topic related to what they were able to accomplish. And that's a, that's a very, very valuable uh, resource that you've included in each of those. Thank you. Correct. Yes, yeah. we have for each hero an explore activity because we're just, uh, we're, our, our intent in the book is to grab your interest mm -hmm. about that hero, and then we give you ways to find out more. It's fascinating. Visiting historical sites is a great way to conduct research and learn about some of the heroes found in Dennis's book. Right now, we're going to see what our MTA crew discovered when they met Dennis at Mount Vernon in Alexandria, Virginia, home to one of our country's most well-known heroes, George Washington. When we return, get ready to take the hero challenge. Stay tuned. One of my favorite stories about uh, the general is uh, a crisis that he faced at the end of the war. And I always like to wear this hat when I tell the story. Uh, Mr. Washington was a very humble man, but he loved to dress the part. And he knew he played important parts in our, in our country's development. And so if it called for a grand hat, Mr. Washington wore a grand hat. At the end of the war, we had won, we had beaten the British with the help of the French, uh, but many people don't realize we had a severe crisis. Mr. Washington's leading officers and his men had not been paid, and they were determined to get something for their efforts, so uh, with victory at hand, they decided, if necessary, they would march on Philadelphia and 
seize Congress. We almost had a coup d'etat in this country early in our history. And Mr. Washington was here in Virginia, heard of the plot, traveled by horse, of course, to Newburgh, New York, where many of these officers were located, and gathered them together to plead with them to give Congress more time. Well, students, they were so angry, they wouldn't even listen to their beloved general, who they adored. So he uh, pleaded with them, they wouldn't listen. There was a member of Congress there who pleaded with them. And then something amazing happened. The general looked at these men, these battle-tested, hardened men. And he said, gentlemen, I have a letter from the treasurer of the country promising payment. Gentlemen, if you will permit me to put on my spectacles, for I have not only grown gray, but nearly blind in your service. And the general put on his glasses, proceeded to start reading the letter, and history records that nobody heard the letter because these battle-tested men started crying, sobbing. They had never seen their beloved leader wear glasses. They had seen his hair gray through the war. They had seen the wrinkles in his brow get deeper and deeper. They knew that he couldn't be at his beloved Mount Vernon for over eight years, but they had never seen the general with glasses. Even his eyes were suffering. How dare they ask for money when their beloved general was physically suffering. He finished the letter, which almost no one heard. He said, gentlemen, I bid you farewell. He left the room. When the men regained their composure, when they stopped crying, they voted unanimously to give Congress more time. General Washington had probably the greatest charisma this country will ever know in one individual. What an incredible story. Um, from the way you, you, you told it, I could really feel the mood of, of how the men must have felt as they stood there having their commander-in-chief address them in that way. And from his perspective, what it must have been like to have to, to say those things and address his men under the circumstances that they were in. Well, and it's a story that my, my audiences have rarely heard yeah. and are very moved by it. Tell us about character. What type of character did George Washington possess that made him the leader that he was and the hero that he is? I, I think two of the general's most outstanding character traits were his integrity mm -hmm. and uh, his trustworthiness. Now, you can add to that a whole list mm -hmm. of courage, uh, perseverance. I mean, ge the general never gave up. He never lost sight of his goal. And uh, uh, despite failure after failure, militarily, for example, he continued to be convinced that we could win. Character traits are uh, what really do separate the 50 people in the book from uh, uh, others. Uh, the, the, for example, they all share, all 50 share the character trait of perseverance. Heroes don't give up. Uh, failure is a part of their life, but they accept that as a learning process. And I think that's a powerful message for kids. It's, y you are going to make mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes when you do your math homework. Sometimes daily. <laughs> oh, absolutely. absolutely. And the key is like Mr. Edison, to learn from your mistakes and try something new. Try something else. Um, uh, probably one of the character traits that I most admire in, in the heroes in the book is integrity. Uh, and I, I like to role play my favorite president, Harry S. Truman, and uh, when I do so, I use the, the uh, quote, not attributed to him, but it certainly personifies Harry S. Truman. Integrity is when no one is watching. And how you, you behave when Absolutely. no one is watching. Exactly. Well, I think it's time for our viewers to take the hero challenge. All right. All right. I have some clues about our heroes. We're going to read the description and then give you, our viewers, some choices to see if you can guess who the hero is. So let's get started. Here's our first clue. Despite a big reward offered for this former slave's capture, this hero continued to lead hundreds to the promised land. Was it A, Yo-Yo Ma, B, George Washington Carver, C, Harriet Tubman, or D, Thomas Edison? The answer is C, Harriet Tubman. Then let's tell us about Harriet. Harriet Tubman was incredible in that she, who, uh, being a slave, had earned her freedom, had escaped to be free, but felt so strongly about helping others that she would risk her life 
go back into slaveholding states and bring others to freedom. It's estimated she brought over 300 slaves to freedom. Uh, there was a very, very high reward to capture her because uh, she was so successful at uh, being the uh, conductor on the Underground Railroad, which, by the way, slaves walked to freedom. There was no subway. There were, there were, there were no, no train cars. Right. And I know from reading about Harriet Tubman, you were talking about how all of these heroes had perseverance as a common bond. She, she also persevered, but she also didn't allow any of the slaves to give up, that's, which I found so impressive. That's correct. She even threatened to shoot them if they tried to <laughs> she wouldn't let them uh, return. turn back. That's, that's right. Well, okay, Dennis, why don't you read the next quote? All right. Many of the conveniences we have in our homes today were invented by this hero. Was it A, Tecumseh, B, Christopher Reeve, C, Eleanor Roosevelt, or D, Thomas Edison? The answer is D, Thomas Edison. And Thomas Edison, by the way, Della, is my sister and her husband's favorite hero. Their home that I'll be staying at tonight here in Alexandria is almost an Edison museum. Not a day goes by in our lives that something which Mr. Edison invented does not affect us. The light bulb, uh, the students, when you, uh, you listen to your iPod, thank Mr. Edison That's because right. he gave us the phonograph. The next time you're in a movie theater, thank Mr. Edison because he invented the film projector. Uh, he's an incredible example of never giving up. Dennis, we have a few more email questions, so let's go back to those. This question comes from Logan in Springfield, Virginia, and he writes, Dear Mr. Denenberg, are you aware of anyone who became a hero even though they kept failing? Oh, I'm aware, Logan, of lots of people. In fact, again, it's something that most heroes have in common. They don't succeed uh, right away. Mm -hmm. well, one of my favorite heroes in the book is a, a hometown hero to me, and that is Milton S. Hershey. And Logan, you probably know him because of uh, the Hershey bar, the chocolate. chocolate. Uh, <laughs> but Mr. Hershey didn't get his start making chocolate. In fact, Logan, if I look in his fanny pack, which has other items about Mr. Hershey, but here's a caramel. It is caramels that made Mr. Hershey wealthy, but not initially. He failed, he failed his candy business in Philadelphia, in Detroit, in Chicago. It wasn't until he came back to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and that an English candy maker tasted his caramels that Mr. Hershey became a success. So just think, Logan, if Mr. Hershey had quit instead of uh, persevering, we wouldn't have his good chocolate today. Well, we still have a few heroes left on our set that we have not talked about. Could you just briefly tell us something about them? We have Yo-Yo Ma, we have uh, Tecumseh here, we have Christopher Reeve. Sure. Uh, Yo-Yo Ma is uh, ambassador to classical music today. Mm -hmm. If it were not for the voice of Yo-Yo Ma and his uh, willingness to help young people mm -hmm. find classical music, uh, I think classical music would almost become lost. Tecumseh, who lived in the early 1800s, was an amazing uh, Indian leader, Native American leader, who believed very much in uniting his people to hold on to their own land. In fact, I tell you, white, the white settlers so admired Tecumseh that they even gave some of their children his name, the most famous being William Tecumseh Sherman, the Civil War general. That's a very high honor. It is a very high mm -hmm. honor. Christopher Reeve, uh, who sadly has died since we originally published the book in 2001, and, and as has his wife, Dana, is to us uh, the model of how a celebrity can become a hero. Dealt a tragic event in his life, Christopher Reeve, who had played Superman a, a with a very capital famous S, movie star. Yes. became truly a Superman mm -hmm. in working uh, towards building our understanding of what it means to be paralyzed. I have another email question sure. for you. This is from Muhammad, and he writes, aren't heroes usually people who are very old <laughs> or even dead like Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson? Muhammad, that's an excellent yes, question. Uh, we used to think you had to be a dead white man to be a hero, and that's one of the goals of our book is to show you that no. Um, heroes are very much alive. We had, when we first published the book, we had 11 of our heroes were still with us. Uh, again, mm -hmm. Christopher Reeve has died, Rosa Parks, mm -hmm. the wonderful civil rights leader has died. Mm -hmm. But Muhammad, uh, we have heroes with us today, and it's important to learn their stories. Right. You were just referring to Yo-Yo Ma. Absolutely. Right. And I'm sure, Muhammad, you even have heroes in your life, you know, the, the people who have made your life 
uh, better. I like to talk about unsung heroes, uh, Della, as well as famous heroes. My, my number one unsung heroes are my mom and dad. Uh, they're not with me anymore, mm -hmm. but they, they still inspire me and uh, make me realize that I can do my best in life. Dennis, are you aware of any people who become heroes simply because they were doing something they really just loved? Oh, um, absolutely, I think so. I, I, uh, probably a number of people in the mm -hmm. arts. We have in the book, for example, uh, the, the wonderful female impressionist painter, uh, Mary Cassatt. Mm -hmm. She loved to paint. And even though, because she was a woman, art galleries would not accept her beautiful paintings in her day, mm -hmm. she kept painting because she loved to do it. Uh, Martha Graham kept dancing even when people laughed at her. So yes, heroes often... Uh, and she was actually an adult when she became a dancer, from what I read. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. She came to it later, in, mm -hmm. which, not as a child. Uh, but I think if, when you read the stories of the 50, you'll find that a, a large number of them pursued what they loved. They had a passion for something, and, and that's one of our messages to kids. What is your passion? Pursue it, pursue it. And we also give that, that suggestion, too, when we're helping children come up with ideas to write. Write about what you know, what about's dear to you, and that will help give you the ideas and help them flow. Absolutely. Yeah. Dennis, we're almost out of time. I, you know, it's been great having you on the show. We've learned so much, and there's been so many inspirational people that we've talked today. Um, do you have any advice for our viewers who are watching? Yes. I think the advice is learn about these wonderful men and women. Mm -hmm because you will be inspired to do your very best and because we owe them a debt of thanks. I, I like to point out to my audiences, mm -hmm. for example, Dr. Jonas Salk. Dr. Salk stopped the ravages of polio and yet today so many young people don't have a clue who he even was and he did it all, Della, for nothing. He took no money for the wonderful gift he gave us uh, in terms of the vaccine. And you know, Dr. Salk, of course, is listed as a hero in your book, and so is Franklin Roosevelt. And Dr. Salk was responsible for the vaccine that could have saved Franklin Roosevelt Absolutely. from the polio that, that made him an invalid. That's correct. Uh, so th th there's a lot of connections among some of these heroes as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking it's to you today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Our guest today has been author Dennis Denenberg. If you would like to learn more about his books, visit his website at www.heroesforus.com. To learn more about our upcoming authors and the Fairfax Network, visit us at www.fcps.edu slash Fairfax Network. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Della Kidd. Keep reading, keep writing, and keep dreaming. Watching the Fairfax Network, a division of Fairfax County Public Schools. It's programming for students in kindergarten through grade 12. It's programming for professional development for teachers and staff. It's programming for parents and community. Award-winning programming for educators by educators. Register today and visit the Fairfax Network online video store, www.fcps.edu slash Fairfax Network, or call 1-800-233-3277.